to another vlog I have just filled up my water bottle because it is hot outside and I'm headed outside to continue weeding which I started yesterday but oh my gosh there are just so many weeds and so much grass growing back in the garden beds that I made earlier this year that it's taking forever so I had to break it up because I was being very particular and trying to get every tiny little root to minimize the weeding in the next round. So we've got our water, we're gonna head outside and see how much I can get done before I totally melt. Even Junie doesn't wanna come out here because it's so blazing hot. Oh, is that Miss Pipey? Okay, now you wanna come out. You can. sweat like straight up dripping sweat and I had to come inside because I was so hot and so thirsty naturally I did not drink enough water today so very dehydrated while I was out there finishing up I picked some of our King Henry violets these are actually edible flowers and I thought it would be fun to make some ice cubes with them I've seen people do it a million times and I'm always like oh that's such a clever idea but I've never done it. And now that I have some of my own in the garden, I thought we could make a few and maybe later this week we'll make a fun mocktail or something. So this should be pretty easy. I'm going to use the ice cube trays we used last week for the pesto. They're just silicone cubes. They have a little silicone top so you can seal them up. I will fill this with water first and then I will take one flower and place it inside each cube if i put the flowers in first and then i fill it with water they're gonna like flip all over the place this way i have a little more control over like what they look like and where they're placed in the cube are in the freezer now and since it is a thousand degrees outside I thought it would be the perfect day to make homemade ice cream sandwiches so I am going to throw my shoes on and run down to the farm store to grab a quart of ice cream and then I'm gonna come back home and whip up some chocolate chip cookie dough I believe I have everything I need so 
if not we'll have to pivot but then we can assemble some homemade ice cream sandwiches after dinner for dessert i'm actually very excited to leave the house because i just got my new barefoot sneakers in yesterday so this will be my first time leaving the house with them they just look like regular sneakers. My friend Carrie Ann has been telling me about barefoot shoes for years. She's always looked for them for her kids and she's always raved about how much better they are for your feet. And it's taken me years to let that sink in, like the importance of taking care of your feet, which sounds so silly. But you know, a lot of times for me, I'm buying shoes based on looks and not really paying attention to or caring so much about how they make my feet feel but you know you grow up and different things become more important and you become more aware of those types of things so what are barefoot shoes what are barefoot sneakers they are just designed to mimic the natural shape and movement of your foot um, the shoe industry has just exploded with all kinds of styles and shapes and cushions and they, we've kind of forced our feet into what exists today, but it's not always great for your foot. They support stability and mobility, and they're designed in such a way that it feels like you're actually walking barefoot. So you don't feel all that cushion and arch support like you might in a regular sneaker. Um, I will include a link to the Vivo Barefoot website, which has a great article on the benefits of barefoot shoes. I actually got these ones from Amazon. They are a bit cheaper. So if you're just getting introduced to this idea and want to try them out, it's a great starter pair of shoes to get comfy with. And then you can, you know, purchase a more expensive pair if it's something that you're interested in. This is my first time trying them out. I will let you know what I think. Um, they already feel a little different than regular sneakers because the toe box is very wide. So it's almost like, it's almost like they feel big, but it's big by the toe box, not in the length, if that makes sense. Um, but anyway, I'm gonna give them a go. Ooh. They're really so cool. They do feel like you're walking barefoot, um, but you know, they give you that protection between the bottom of your foot and the ground, which is great. So anyway, I'm rambling. I need to go get ice cream. I will keep you posted on this and I will include links to these shoes and the article, like I said, if you wanna read more about it. And as I learn more, I will share and ooh, I will let you know what I think about the ones I've just purchased. Okay, let's go get ice cream. so much harder to make than I expected. It's the ice cream part. Like the cookies, they're small, but they were fine. <laughs> but getting the ice cream to like sit properly in the middle without like melting into my hand was very tricky. I ended up just spooning ice cream onto a plate, like mashing it into a pile, kind of the shape that I wanted, like a hamburger. And then I smooshed it between the two cookies. And then I put it in a bowl in the freezer where it's sort of semi-melted as it was freezing, but regardless, it resembles what it's supposed to.
good afternoon, happy Friday. I'm out in the garden again, checking on things because last night we had a huge torrential downpour, thunderstorm, lightning storm, it was awesome. But it was pretty intense, so I wanted to make sure all of the plants made it. Nothing looks completely smushed, just a little flopped over. Um, but it gave them a good water, so that's good. That's one less thing I have to worry about for the next few days. Um, not so much in these gardens, but in the pumpkin patch in the back garden. I've been, I've been slacking. I'm just looking at the weather like, mm, rain will come, it'll be fine. <laughs> so, anyway. I just walked around back there and everything looked fine. Mostly everything looked fine. In the raised beds, I had a couple branches down that I had to clean up. But aside from that, we're in good shape and... I'm just enjoying being out here for a few minutes. I'm gonna walk over to the rain barrel because I was really excited about that last night. I just kept thinking about it, but I didn't want to run out in the pouring rain. So I'm gonna walk over there and see how much water we collected in the barrel. All right, well, this is a good sign. This means things were flowing, but it got a little bit clogged up. So I'll have to clean that out. We will unscrew this to see if we can take a peek in and see how much water is in there. I don't know if you can see that. <laughs> hey, we got water. That's so exciting. Oh my gosh. It's the little things, you guys. It's just these little things just make me so happy. Since I am over here, I will show you the status of the pumpkin patch, which is a little despicable, but we will clean it up. I just have not had time. Most of this is actually, well, I shouldn't say most of it. It's probably about 50-50 weeds and plants um the pumpkins over here are getting huge so they really are kind of taking over but this kind of middle area is a little riddled with bittersweet and other weeds which i really need to get in and clean out but i was just looking over here and it looks like we've got some cucumbers starting to grow got a little tiny baby right there see him so that's cool. And then we've got tons of flowers on the plants, which is a great sign. They're happy and producing. So hopefully over the next few weeks, we'll be able to get out here and pick some cucumbers and maybe some zucchini. We will see what is doing well. This area is just getting out of control. This is the area we cleared. It's crazy how fast all these weeds grow back in and we need to get a handle on it because if these things start to go to seed, it's just gonna keep spreading and becoming a problem again, and we'll be right back where we started. So we are going to work on turning some of this up, killing it by covering it with plastic. I have some sheet plastic coming maybe next week. So we're gonna try a few different things to see what works best, and you know that's reasonable um, because we can't do all of this by hand, so. I'll keep you posted on that, but it's not looking good at the moment. All right, I have migrated back inside. It is so humid out and super disgusting. So I figured it would be a perfect time to check on our ice cubes and maybe whip together a sample drink. I have a friend coming over this evening for dinner and I wanted to use these. And yesterday when I went to the grocery store, I got a whole bunch of different like mixer type drinks to concoct something. So I'm going to see how the ice cubes turned out first and then I will experiment with a mocktail recipe. I feel like these turned out pretty good. We'll see how they work once there's liquid in the glass, but they kind of were like floating on top of the water when they froze, so you get a little bit of like dimension with the petals, which is cool. Okay, so for our mocktail, I got this blueberry with hibiscus extract Topo Chico, which looked delicious. I'm going to add some of our favorite ginger beer. This is the Fever Tree premium ginger beer light so it's not super sweet if you don't get the light I feel like it tastes more like a sweet syrup and less gingery and I like when it's really gingery and then I also got some blueberries so I'm going to pour some of those in a bowl muddle them up and then I'll pour them in the drink so we get a little boost on the blueberry flavor and then we'll see how it tastes <laughs> I don't know 
if you can see them floating in there but like over on this side here but it they're just kind of like flopping now and losing their shape because they're melted so that and I feel like because I added all the blueberries in the bottom and it's like a slightly colored liquid they don't really stand out so this just totally feels like one of those Pinterest fails where you're like it looks so good and mine looks not so great If anybody's done this before and you have any tips, let me know. More importantly, let's try this and see how it tastes. Mm. The blueberry is excellent. I love this. The blueberry with hibiscus extract, that hibiscus like is really, really subtle, but it's really nice. And I think adding the extra blueberries gave it a nice boost. Not bad on the flavors. A little bit of a fail on the flower ice cubes and also I don't know if I should have put all the muddled blueberries in there <laughs> it's making a bit of a mess in the bottom you know what I think this could also use is a little bit of lemon juice it's like not too sweet but it's more sweet and less tart and I like a good balance between sweet and tart so I'm gonna add some lemon juice okay yes Definitely add the lemon. That helps balance it out a little bit better. Okay, I feel like I have a good recipe. I just did not deliver on the aesthetics very well, so probably didn't need to add all the muddled blueberry. Like, maybe just squishing the juice out of them would have been better. And then just garnishing with a few fresh blueberries. And then the floral ice cubes. I feel like if there was a way to suspend the flower better in the middle of the ice cube, it would be a lot better. But because mine were kind of floating on the top and some of the petals were like escaping and the petals just froze like that as soon as i added liquid and they melted the petals got kind of floppy so if you try making them let me know if you have success and what i did wrong and if you do make this drink or something similar let me know how you liked it below now that that's done <laughs> before i wrap up the vlog this week i wanted to share with you what we are going to start working on for our next project We've been talking about it a little bit here and there, but I haven't really made moves on it. And I recently felt a little more inspired to kick off an indoor project. Not because of the heat, maybe because of the worms, <laughs> but I think it's time that we work on my office. You'll notice a big piece of furniture is missing in here, which I sold last night. We had our old IKEA kitchen island here, which I was using for a desk temporarily. And honestly, I think just keeping it in here was what was holding me up because I really liked it, but it's just not right for this room and I didn't have anywhere else to put it. So I got rid of that. And the next thing I need to do is kind of clear all this stuff off the floor. So we have a blank slate to look at, get measurements and start to figure out what it is that we're going to build. I started some really loose layouts on my iPad. So I'm going to show you that just to kind of share where my head is at. And we're going to take this slow. It's not going to be like one of those videos where it's a before and after in the same video. I just don't have the time to do that. So this is going to be like a real life project, something that you too could do yourself. Um, and I will try to share as much as possible along the way, including all the struggles, which, oh goodness, there will be many of them, I'm sure. Um, and also my thought process, like why I'm thinking so much about certain things, what I'm trying to solve for, and you know, how I'm sourcing and putting everything together. So let's look at a few sketches. I'm hoping you can see this all right. Basically, we've got sort of the box, which is representative of the room. I've kind of indicated where the door is. We've got a closet door here and a window here, and the rest is just like open wall with a few plugs and switches. I've noted down here a few things that I want to make space for so that when I'm trying different layouts, I can kind of figure out where those things are going to fit because those are my priorities. And I've also still got this closet, so we can kind of keep that in mind as additional storage space. I can put printers in there, like TBD, it's an open area, um, and I'm not quite sure how I'm going to handle that yet. The first thing I wanted to figure out was just what is the layout? Like, what do we need to build versus what's going to be a furniture piece that we're going to put in? So I'm going to show you a few different ideas I had. So the first option, and keep in mind you're looking from an aerial view, so we're looking down at the room. The first option would be to build a wall-to-wall 
floor to ceiling built in with a desk space in the middle and on the left and right we'd have bookshelves. So the top would probably be open shelving and the bottom would be closed like cabinets so I could store something like a printer. We'd have a desk chair in the middle here, space for maybe a small like cafe table or something if I just wanted to like work in a different location and then maybe a big comfy chair or lounge or something like this in the corner. Um, I am trying to maximize the space as much as possible and since I don't access the closet that regularly I would probably put something in the way of it and when I needed to get in there I could just shift it to the side so the room itself is quite small so we're really trying to work with a small space so that's kind of option one option two is similar but I love the idea of incorporating like older pieces and I thought it could be kind of interesting if I found like a really cool old wooden desk or table that I could convert into a desk and actually just insert that between two um, symmetrical floor to ceiling built-ins. So this would be similar to the other option visually but we would only be building in these two shelves and this would actually be a per piece of furniture that we would slide in between and I think that could just have a really nice aesthetic but also what I liked about that is this could slide out and we could easily slide in like a twin mattress or something like if we had guests over and we needed extra sleeping room so the fact that this would be a movable piece of furniture could make this a more like versatile space. Another option I was thinking about was doing more of an L shape so the reason I liked this is because the window is here in the top right and if I'm facing this direction this wall when I'm talking on video calls, the light shines on my face, so it's much better light for video conferencing. But if I'm facing this wall, it's kind of to the side, so my face is a little bit darker. Now, that's not the biggest deal because I can always get lighting or lamp or something to help with that, but I wanted to kind of see what this might feel like. And in this layout, I've done kind of like a corner that's open so I could face this wall or this wall. And then this like bottom side here would be floor to ceiling, open shelving on the top and closed cabinetry below. So this layout would occupy more of the footprint of the room, but would give me a little more flexibility with where I could sit and work from and like position myself depending on, you know, what kind of work I'm doing. Next, I was thinking, what if we thought outside the box a little bit? Like what if I did a built-in on this wall and a built-in desk on this wall. So they were kind of symmetrical. I could use this center space for like a big comfy chair or even just like a little cafe table and a seat or two. So I had kind of two different working spaces and we kind of had this almost like hallway space on the right. It keeps the closet and the window open. It keeps this door space open, but it could be a little bit tight here. So I think before I really decide I need to do some measurements and figure out if this is a reasonable amount of space to have a desk chair and a comfy chair and access like the cabinetry below or if it's just going to be too tight and that really wouldn't be the best layout. So at the moment, I think I am leaning toward this option where we have this inserted desk that I source somewhere and then we just have built-in shelves on the left and right. I need to do some measuring. I obviously need to find a desk first because that will kind of determine the size of these shelves because I don't want huge gaps between and kind of like tape the space out to figure out if that feels right, if it's enough space, if it gives me enough storage, if it kind of checks all these boxes I've noted below. But at the moment, I'm leaning this direction. What I like about it the most is it gives me the most space for moving other pieces of furniture around. Like, I can move this chair and put it in this corner in front of the cabinet. I can move this little cafe table in front of the window and have a little chair and sit there to work sometimes. So it's not so permanent that I can't shift things around when I feel like it. I have saved a ton of inspiration on Pinterest for different reasons and I will pop a few of these like full screen on the video here so you can see them better. But this one in the top left, I really loved how they built in this bookshelf above the desk area. And I think we could do something similar even with like an inserted desk here. So imagine we kind of create this shell with the left and right and across the top. But in the middle here is this beautiful old wooden desk or table that could slide in or out. Um, and I love this color. I actually have been thinking about this color for the kitchen, but 
I, I have to think about that some more because I'm such a green girl. I don't want every room to be green. Um, so we need to kind of plan a few of the rooms down here before I settle on a color, but it's one of my choices. This is kind of what inspired that idea where they've got a desk between these two built-ins. It just feels to me more cozy and less like this big massive built-in that just is all the same color. I love how it breaks up your eye. I love that it has different depths. I love that the wood kind of brings in this balance with dark and light. So I'm, I'm currently on the hunt for an old desk and depending on what I find, that will probably sway which direction I end up going. If I can't find something I love in a reasonable amount of time, it might not make sense to do that. So we will see. This image is really what inspired the idea of like having a working space in the center of the room. Obviously, you know, it's, it's easy to throw a desk up against a wall, but sometimes I want to look away from the wall. I want to look out the window. I want to look out the door. I love to switch up my spaces. I'm always working in different rooms of our house now, so I want to be able to move around. And I like this idea for me on a smaller scale of having a little center table or a little cafe table that I can shift around the room. I loved this image and there are a lot of images I see where they had furniture in front of the shelves or the cabinets and it's easy to say to yourself like I don't want to block anything but it's such a small room that I really have to be open-minded so I didn't want to lock myself into you know not blocking a cabinet that I use a few times a year by incorporating movable pieces like this it's easy to just shift it out of the way when you need something and then put it back in its place when you're done. The last image I'll show, share with you is just a really compact office space. And this was another one that made me think about how to really utilize the space as much as I can from floor to ceiling, across all of the walls, to maximize storage, maximize comfort, you know, make myself at multiple spaces I can work from. You can do so much with small spaces and I kind of love that it is a tiny space. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a design challenge, but that's what makes it fun. And I think at the end, it will be a really cozy, inviting space. Hopefully I have not completely lost you. Um, I tend to go on and on about design choices and scroll for days just like saving things I love because I love a lot of different styles. But at the end of the day, we need to move forward. I need an office. I'm working at the dining room table. I'm working in the sitting room. I'm working in the kitchen. And I'm really just like, recently I've just been wanting this place to land and just cozy up in, you know? Um, I've always wanted a library and that still might happen in one of these rooms, TBD. But in the meantime, I think I can make kind of a, a mini little library feeling space in an office of my own and create an environment where I really love to work but also a place that I can close the door at the end of the day and be done. Like work won't follow me out of that room, hopefully. Like I said, it will be a slow, slow process. I will keep you in the loop. Um, I still have lots of decisions to make, but I think the next step is clearing the rest of the stuff out of that room and taking some measurements so I can really better understand you know, how much space I have to work with and then also trying to source an old desk or table that I can use as that centerpiece because at the end of the day, if I am going to put a piece of furniture there, I'm going to base the rest of the more permanent structures around that. So I want to have something I love in hand before I actually start making assumptions. So hope you enjoyed that. Really excited to share the process with you. We will be building as much as possible from scratch, including cabinets and shelves. We'll be doing trim. Um, maybe a little bit of electrical moving, um, obviously all of the decor, the paint, uh, maybe some wallpaper, not sure yet, and then of course the finishing design touches. I'm smiling ear to ear because I'm just genuinely so excited to kick something off. It's been ages and I don't know, I just felt kind of stuck and uh, the other day I was like, you know what, it's time. So excited to bring you on this journey. With all of that said, I am going to wrap the vlog up here. Thank you so much for watching this week and spending your time with me. If you liked the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for future updates. And we will be back next week with some more office progress, hopefully weeding the pumpkin patch, and I am going to the Barber Tent Sale on Thursday. So lots of fun things to come. Bye.